all right if, especially if it's endodontically treated you may land up uh, fracturing the abutment and the crown comes back uh, with with the abutment in the patient's hand and you're like ab main kya karu yaar why because you've given this patient a 5 year 10 year or a 15 year warranty and you're lost how to manage this scenario do not jump in uh, to just doing monolithic zirconia because you fear that they will fail start thinking in terms of partial bonded restorations with lithium disilicate so that you always have the option of a plan b remember they don't break very easily and they don't debond very easily yes lithium disilicate by itself is not very strong okay but when you bond it to the underlying tooth it becomes extremely extremely uh, strong a material to withstand the occlusal forces even in a case like this all right this is how it looks from the occlusal surface a lot of tooth material loss uh so we went ahead and i restored this case in the same protocol started with diagnostic impressions a face bore record deprogramming was done with unwind md i i proudly say that unwind md is an anterior deprogrammer that i have designed myself and i have a patent towards the same it allows me to relax the mandible it allows me to take the mandible into a centric relation position allowing for me to now go ahead and record the correct bite in cr and mount it on a semi adjustable articulator in this patient we had to open the bite we had to raise the vertical we went ahead and did that on the articulator we then scanned the articulator and uh, we then printed our Uh, waxed up models all right so this is a digital print and not a basic wax up print but what you get with these models works the exact same way that you do with your wax up models because you make putty indices you do your test drives and then you start preparing through those test drives okay so these are the final preparations for this patient as you can see lower anteriors are all just veneer preps extremely conservative in nature if you look at posterior preps these are uh, either v tops v tops are where you have a buckle preparation and an occlusal preparation or i have the classic occlusal table tops which is just uh, a biting surface uh, preparation no teeth were endodontically treated here excepting for the lower left 6 which is already pre uh, was already treated before the patient came into my practice and uh, for this tooth right we did a preparation that's called as an endo crown preparation okay which means we did not build the core structure up with composite at all we just went ahead and prepared the cavitation and made the final impression now these are the set of burrs that i love to use for doing these kind of tabletop preparations uh not the conventional burrs but slightly modified burrs and you can find out more about these at mikdental.in and here again these are burrs that i have designed myself uh and and have patents for these because i believe these just make life a lot simpler and more predictable when it comes to getting the preparations the way you want them okay uh so if you want more details please visit uh the website for the same these were all the mandibular preparations these were all the maxillary preparations again no endodontic treatment done minimalistic preparations barely a 0.5 mm deep chamfer margin uh, everywhere proximal contacts opened where needed because this patient had some proximal caries uh, posteriors were bare occlusal reductions as you can see here when you look at the posteriors uh, you just have classic overlay preps all right so just the occlusal domes in porcelain because that's where the patient's going to bite upon all right and that's where the patient has majorly lost uh, tooth material okay now very very important again is you use rubber dam and bond all of these individually and uh, that's how my patient looks immediately post bonding occlusal view maxillary occlusal view mandibular here we had to use a medium opaque ingot of the emax why because this patient had a lot of internal staining and discoloration so had i used a translucent one it would have looked more aesthetic but the underlying color of the dentin which is yellow would have shown through so we wanted to mask that which is why i went with a medium opaque or an mo ingot for this patient remember this is how the patient walked in and guess what this is how the patient walked out b b b b b confident emax or lithium disilicate when bonded to the tooth 
is an extremely, extremely stable uh, material, not just for aesthetics at the front, but also for function at the back. All right. And I say this from experience. This is a beautiful quote by Albert Einstein, who says, if you always do what you always did, you will always get what you always got. So, so, so very true. And if you want more help towards understanding the concepts of partial bonded restorations, be it for a single tooth, be it for a vital tooth, be it for an endodontically treated tooth, or be it for complex full mouth reconstructions, guess what? It's time you change how you think. It's time you start thinking differently. Let's move away from what textbooks have taught us. I'm not saying they are wrong. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm saying there is a better way in my personal opinion of doing it. Because for years that I have been practicing partial bonded restorations, I have seen less failures than I used to with my full coverage restorations that were looted to the underlying tooth structure. Friends, I'd like to present to you master volume of Clinical Fixed Prosthodontics. That's a book that I have scripted. It is in its second edition. Uh, the master volume has more than 25 chapters and a large chunk of it is dedicated to functional dentistry, occlusion, full mouth rehabilitation, porcelain veneers and implant dentistry. It's a colored atlas. All right. It's not something that you that you read to write an exam. It's not something you read to give a viva, but it's something you read to apply in your clinical practice on an immediate basis. And if you're wondering where can I procure the same, I have shared with you here a contact number and the website where you can go ahead and look at a sneak peek view of the book. And if you like it, go ahead and order the same friends. Uh, once again, not just master volume, but there is also a starter volume, which is for someone who's beginning with crown and bridge dentistry. So uh, basically for starters, you have the starter volume. And for those who want to take their dentistry to the next level is where the master volume is. So these are two different books, uh, clinical fixed prosthodontics in the second edition. All right, guys, at this point, I'd like to close my presentation stating a big thank you to the organizers of the IPS, the Chennai chapter for giving me this platform and to all of you audiences out there uh, who have been kind enough to come in and attend the session. I hope this uh, half an hour that we have spent together has added more value to your understanding of partial bonded restorations. What I would like to tell you here is uh, a quick experience of mine when I heard an international speaker for the first time talk about partial bonded restorations, the first thought that came to my mind is, oh, you know what, this is not going to work in India. I, I approached uh, the gentleman and he said, and I quote, you cannot learn swimming by watching others swim. You need to dive in. So if you want to find out if partial bonded restorations are viable a treatment option for your patients, go ahead, give it a try. I'm not saying jump in and start doing full mouth reconstructions. I'm telling you, start with single tooth restorations. Try doing conservative dentistry. Try understanding the philosophy of isolation with a rubber dam and bonding. And be rest for sure that you will have done a massive service for your patient and in return, gotten a whole lot of comfort to yourself. Because believe me, the worst place for enamel to be is down the suction drain. That enamel belongs to the patient. Are you ready to keep it there? I wish you guys all the very best in the prosthetic field for times to come. Stay strong, stay healthy. My best wishes are always with you. Bye-bye.